Pete George, and we are live on Game Changers with Vicki Abelson. Our guest tonight is Lainey Kazan. Yeah. Welcome to Connie's Humble Chapeau. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have to tell you, Lainey. Yeah. People say this to blow smoke, but I mean this. It's my favorite movie. I've been saying that for oh, 25 years. However you. many years... I had Richard Benjamin in the house. He told the story of you guys of working with all of you. I know you have a story about about working with um with um Peter? Yes, hello. <laughs> and 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 I know you have a great story about what happened when you met him. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tell. Well, Mel Brooks said to me on the first day. Okay, uh, so first explain. I didn't even know Mel was a producer. On yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Mel Brooks produced it, and I wanted. What happened? Let okay. Me take it from the beginning. Yeah, take it from the top. Okay. I have a friend, Norman Steinberg. The writer. Right, correct. But do you know De Dennis Palumbo as well? Yeah, but he didn't really write it. He didn't write it. Okay. Okay. All right. So he put he wrote an outline, and then Norman took it and wrote a script. I see. But they both got credit. Okay. Okay. So I used to go to parties with Norman just as a friend, and sometimes I would like fool around, and I would do a Yiddish accent. And um, and I would have fun with it, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd have fun with the people, and I'd come into the house like that, or I'd wear a babushka. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he said, "We're doing a movie," and uh, oh oh, he said, "Can you? You think you could do Maria Ospenskaya? She was Wolf I Wolf Man's. She was Wolf Man's mother in the, the movies. In the horror movies. In the horror movies." So oh I said, my! Yes, I can. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> so they hired me to do yeah. Robin Hood. Remember, it was on for a minute, but it was a TV br show? brilliant. No, and, no, no, yeah. So I was in it, and Artie who? Butler was in it, and oh, I don't remember who played Robin. Okay, Hood. but anyway, so I was in this, and Mel Brooks produced it. So he said, "We're doing this movie called My Favorite Year," and. Um, We'd like to see you for the journalist. So I, I the I funny said, woman? No, no. Wait, who was the, the journalist? Um, well, who was the journalist? Uh, I can't think of. Her I name. can't either. Okay, right, but she was. She's wonderful. Okay, but I didn't want to play that part. No, I thought I have to play this Yiddish <laughs> mother because that would be fun. So I got dressed at home. You were young for it at the time. Yeah, I was yeah. In my 30s, yeah, you were my young thirties. Way too young for that part. But Angela Lansbury was young when she played uh, in the Manchurian Candidate. And yeah. She was and also Anne mother. Bancroft when she did The Graduate right, was only exactly. a few years older than Dustin Hoffman. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I. So it's called I, acting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and makeup. And makeup. <laughs> and good lighting. So I I I get dressed. And I just knew this woman. I knew her, I mean, from her, her kish kiss. <laughs> Did you model her after? Was, was, I modeled her after, uh, she was a combination of my mother and my aunt. And uh, Just the fact that you say aunt, though, that is not Jewish. You have to say aunt. Uh, the, my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> no. And the, all the ladies that used to mm -hmm. sit in front of my house yeah. on Ocean Parkway, they were all this woman. So I went and got dressed. Mm -hmm. I got mother, my mother's glasses from the 50s, like this, <laughs> white bone with grapes hanging off of them. <laughs> and my mother used to say, I'm so shy. I'd say, Mom, a woman who wears those glasses <laughs> with grapes is not shy. So, so I had, I went, I, I, Richard Benjamin roared with laughter when I walked in the room. And they gave me the part. So now um, I'm coming on the set, and they said, would you like to meet Peter O'Toole? So I said, I'd love to meet Peter O'Toole. I love Peter O'Toole. I was so intimidated. Mm. So I walked into his dressing room, and his head is in the sink, <laughs> and he's washing his hair, and he's wearing his underwear, little briefs. <laughs> nice tush. <laughs> yeah, cute, yeah. but a little too skinny for me. <laughs> So now his head is in the sink, and I hear, come in. <laughs> and he says, come in, and he takes a towel, wraps it around his head, pushes the towel back, and says, oh, my dear. I'm so honored and pleased to meet you. And there he was in his little briefs with a towel on his head. And he was, like, so elegant oh. that it was magnificent. 
<sighs> and so we started off with the greatest relationship. Oh, that's so He bad. delighted in me. I was going to say, did he get all the jokes? Oh, did he yeah, love all he the... he delighted in me. And he, you know, I mean, he brought me those flowers for real. Like, I mean, all of a sudden he brought me flowers. And we hadn't had it in the scene before that. So it was like, for me. I said, for oh, me. Oh, God. Swanee. Yeah. Swanee. <laughs> so that was the beginning of really... Um, my career as a character actress, and I could. It, it became before you were like gorgeous. Yeah, I you was were. A, I you was were. A kind of you were a sexy, sexy gorgeous. I I watched you and Dee Martin all day mm-hmm. today. Oh my God, the two of you together. Uh, yeah. Give me well, a little you know, kiss. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? I wanted to act, and I wanted to change my image. Because all I got hired for were prostitutes and madams and go-go dancers. Really? Yeah. So I decided that this part could change it. I didn't know it would change it that much and that I couldn't get any other kind of job. That I play every ethnic mother (laughs) known to men, you know? I mean, it was like, I was Greek, Italian. All right, I just just saw it. I'm, I'm going home to watch it tonight. Oi, my son is gay. I uh, Saul Rubin. I know Saul. He's he's a friend. Oh my God. I haven't seen that movie, but I'm dying to see it. You look hysterical. hysterical. You look hysterical. It's a little dated. It's all right. It's the subject matter is a little dated. Yeah. But we had so much fun. But I had a director named F. Geni. He was from Israel. Oh. And he used to call me up. And he'd say, Lenny, darling, I want to meet you. <laughs> and so I said to him, all right, we'll meet at the Daily Grill, but I don't want to do a script that's called Oive, My Son is Gay. <laughs> There's no way I'm doing that. <laughs> he said, just meet me, you'll see me, you'll talk. <laughs> so I pictured about a 60-year-old man with dandruff. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he comes oh, this crying. gay guy with a, well, all these colored hats with a, a pinwheel on top of his head. I went, oh my God, this guy's nuts. <laughs> but he kept offering me more and more money, and I just finally said, I don't give a shit what, you know, what it's called anymore. Just pay me. <laughs> Well, that they got you to do it. I've heard a few things you got talked into because they upped the money. Like you didn't. Okay, so let's go all the way back. So before we even get to Funny Girl, you're in Brooklyn, Erasmus High School. Did you go to school with Barbara? I, I we were there at the same time. Okay, so also my very good friend, also life coach, because I'm Jewish. I have to have a lot of help. Um, Jeremy Stevens went to high school with you. You you might not know him, but he said all of his crowd in the they all worshipped you and they would follow you around. Aww. You didn't know it, but they were all following you around. So so in Erasmus High School, so you started out as a singer, right? That was I the first. Started out as a dancer. As a dancer. I was about three and a half, four years old when I started dancing. And my mother was kind of a very gentle Mama Rose. But she knew every step. I played her in Beaches, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because she knew every step in my dance routine. She was always mimicking me and doing my, my mind routines. And I grew up dancing. And when I was about 12 or 13, I started singing in camp. I went to a camp called Camp Shanawa. Okay, in I went to Kinderland. Kinderland. We yeah, all went to camp. camp. And that's where I really started acting. I mean, and, and doing roles. Wait, now, your father? My father was a bookie. <laughs> like a real, a like, real bookie? Like a real bookie. Yeah. All right. Did he sing? He, oh, that's what I've heard. He sang mm. as a young boy. Mm. He used to sing under people's windows for pennies and dimes. <laughs> yeah. But um, Did your mother sing? Time, no. But by the, my mother was tone deaf. Wow. But, but <laughs> my father, yeah, I had a voice like that. <laughs> like a bookie voice. Oh, that's hysterical. And did you know when you were a kid that your father was a bookie? No, I thought he was in publishing. <laughs> <laughs> Books. Okay, I get it. So so that meant that you traveled. Did you travel? Yes, we, we lived in Miami in the winter. And we lived anywhere the track was open. So in the summertime, you had to be up yeah, the tra- near, yeah, near Saratoga. Okay. So that was where the camp was, up in the Adirondacks. And you know that I am still friends with all the people from camp. 
I love that. It was it was a place that I never had any structure in my life mm -hmm. or anything like. But this place taught me about life, and really it challenged me. And I learned about friendship and you know sportsmanship and all, all that stuff. You know, and so they hired me for all their shows. So do you remember what your first part in the yeah, play? Yeah, I do. What? And you want to know who directed me? Yeah. And Bancroft. Oh, stop mm. this. No, I'm serious. In her camp? Name, yeah. Her, she was my counselor. She was a drama counselor. And her name was Anne Italiano. And she used to have us lie down on the grass and look up at the sky and tell her what we saw. And I was the only one who saw things. <laughs> <laughs> I would see well, things coming out of for the you. clouds. And... She was great. She Did was that great. forge your relationship with Mel Brooks? Yeah, a little bit. Well, our kids went to school together. Oh boy! All right, we're gonna. We're, all right, so we're gonna get so Anne's your 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 drama yeah, cast. So and so that was the beginning of my my my. I, I fell in love with it. What I was the play? Like, what was the first play? I played mom. Um, what was her name? Uh, I sang Bali High. I was uh, in South Pacific. Yeah, yeah, yeah in high school. But, uh, what was her name? Um, Nellie Forbush. No, no, I was. No, oh, I oh, 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 oh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Rose. Ooh, oh. She had a name with a flower. Uh, it'll come oh, you to me. Uh, oh no, now it's coming to me. In that. Well, we'll talk about it. All right, it'll. God damn it. <laughs> this this memory thing know, is really, it's really it's, bad. I can't. I never say it now. Oh God, I can see her in my head, and I yeah. can't. Uh, of, Bloody okay. Mary. Bloody Mary, thank you. Um, so you played Bloody Mary. So um, <laughs> so did you so did you start to I was like nine. But you had already but you were dancing. Yeah. And but you were already singing, obviously, because you had yeah, to sing in that I, role. I was singing and all the kids at camp, they would make me sing all the time. I had like three songs I sang. And then uh, my mother somehow, I don't know how this happened. But she was at the CBS building, and mm -hmm. there was a, a voice teacher there, uh, you know, who would coach mm -hmm. people. I think it had something to do with Leslie Uggams. I don't exactly wow. know, but we, I wound up in this at this school uh, with a teacher named Mabel Horsey. You gotta love a teacher oh, named Mabel my Horsey. Gosh, she was great. She wow. played the blues and jazz and. She introduced me to all that music, mm. and I was started, there music playing in your house when you were growing yeah, up? Like, did you sing on the radio and stuff? My father loved music. Mm -hmm. He liked all the old jazz artists. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, but um, really, I, I I think that she inspired me as well. She was great. What What did you want to be then? Like when I you? To, I don't know. I wanted to be in the theater. I wanted to be in, on Broadway. Okay. My daughter, that's her dream. All right, so, so, she, you're studying voice with her. You're doing plays in school. I, a little bit. I I stopped being visible. I I wanted to be invisible. I didn't. You were a knockout. That couldn't have been easy. I I didn't want to be different. I wanted I wanted to be the same as everybody. I didn't like being pointed out. Mm. You know, I, I didn't like it, but it was interesting because when it was time to go to college, I knew that was the only thing I really could do. I wasn't a great student, and uh, I really didn't like math, and I just didn't like The only thing I liked was history. All right. So I went to, um, I went, I, 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 I got a Wait, I have to do oh. this because there's something on here. All right. I got a drama scholarship to Hofstra. University and I didn't want to leave home. I didn't want to go away. I got into a couple of schools, but that was something I wanted. To Hofstra do. was a very good. Phil Excellent. Rosenthal, good friend of my Phil and, and Phil. Monica, they went yeah. to Hofstra, met there, and I and believe I was just going to say I believe you had the Nostra Costa, whatever yeah. the hell you guys yeah. called the Hofstra the Nostra. Nostra. <laughs> um, so Francis was in your class. Yes, Francis was in the school for four years. I think he was there a couple of years ahead of me. Okay. Uh, but he he started this this uh, club called the Kaleidoscopes and the Green Wigs, and so I became his leading lady. And he wrote for me, and his father wrote this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so I had a really great beginning. I was a very lucky girl. Very, very did lucky. you realize when you were doing that early work with him that he was something special? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very skinny. Wow. Yeah, really skinny. Okay. But he was brilliant. And um, Was he starting to fool around with film or was it no. all stage? It was all, all stage. stage. Okay. I got him a job at Camp Shanawa. <laughs> Are you still going to Camp Chanel? It's hysterical. Well, I was 17. I went to camp. I was a counselor. And I was the drama counselor in the girls' camp, and he was the drama counselor in the boys' camp. I cannot believe this, this story. Is true. Oh, my God. I've never told I don't think I've ever said I, this. This is fantastic. <laughs> oh, God. I so have to meet him now so I can was, tell him um, this story. He started fooling around with film. That's what made me think of it. He's, he had a girlfriend named Emmeline Danita. And she was one of my roommates. So he brought her up to camp, and they made a little movie together. I have to wipe my, blow my nose. Okay. Pete, can you, can you see? It? We didn't say hi to Pete George yet. Let's say hi to Pete hi while Pete. we're doing this. Hi, Pete. Hi. Pete, what, come over and say hello in the camera. After, <laughs> um, after wait, you have to find Lainey a, a tissue for us. Oh, my God. So many people are like... Sending love and like talking and like really? saying things. Pete's there gonna give us questions in a while. Come say hi. Here's Pete George, the, oh. uh, <laughs> the rock and roll comedian. Pete, hi. and we're frozen on here. We're not frozen on there, right? No. Okay, good. No. I don't know. So in Connie's house. In Connie's house. We're in Connie Stevens' house. We really <laughs> are. It is her humble chef home, and it's unbelievable. I got a little tour of the outside. Oh, if it was a yeah. sunny day. It's awesome. Poor Connie's under the weather, so she can't say hello. But maybe and Connie will do this one day. I love that. I, I would, I love, I would love, love to love introduce that. you. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. would love that. Right. So, so anyway, so Pete. And she would love that. Oh, oh, <laughs> good. good, 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 because I would. I'm. I'm yeah. Ridiculous man. We'll get the so, Wi-Fi password in advance. Yeah, well, so Pete is a rock and roll comedian. Pete, what, you got gigs coming up. You're leaving what people weeks. What does that mean, weeks. a rock and roll comedian? I Tell. use an electric guitar in half of my stand-up show, and I do this history of rock, but it's really funny. Wow. So it's very unique. So, um, well, yeah. I'd love to see you. Yeah, you will then, all right? All right, Private definitely. show, if you want. <laughs> Bring tissues for your mask. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so West Virginia going? Saturday. Corporate okay. show, West Virginia. Oh, I'll be there. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> bring a lot of tissues there. Yeah. Um, where am I? I'm like in Ohio, a couple shows, and then I'm in Erie for um, a few days, and then, you know, visiting family for the holidays. And then New Year's Ventura Eve. Harbor Comedy Club, Ventura, okay. California, two shows, New Year's Eve. It's going to be sold out. So. Wow. Nice. Awesome. And then back to Vegas in uh, January. Very so, good. Where in Vegas? Uh, the Grand Hotel downtown. That's a, I started out at the, um, at the go not the Golden Nugget, at uh, the Mint. Uh, no. No. Who, one of those. Yeah. Hooters? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but, but Lainey and Hugh Hefner have quite a relate have quite a history together. I don't know if we're gonna talk about that. I would have um, seen it from that angle, so all right, you're gonna have to tell me in January when you're gone. I didn't even all right, well we'll so talk about we? that. And David Zimmerman says hello and send oh. you his his love. Um, hi, David. Hi, David. So we'll, we'll talk to everybody. There's so many people sending you. Look, the love is coming up. All those little hearts. All, everybody's <laughs> sending love. It? I don't know. It's all these people. people. Um, Gary Collins, Valerie, Lyle. Um, Valerie's who? saying a lot. That's Pete. Christina Guzman, Jack Hoffman, Rose, Paula, Amber. People. All these people are saying oh, hello. Nice. Okay. So, Nikki. Um, okay, so... Where were we? Francis. We're talking oh. about Francis and his, his first film. So um, then he graduated, and I didn't see him for many, many years. Oh. And one night I was singing at the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. And, you know, I was a chanteuse, mm -hmm. you know, and I would wear my gowns real low cut, and I was kind of like this hot girl. Yes, you were. So thank you. Yes, you, you were gorgeous. <laughs> oh. Not that you are still gorgeous, you're still gorgeous, but you were a, like a softig knockout. Thank you. Yes. Knockout. Anyway. Francis. Francis. He, all of a sudden, he came backstage with all these people that I knew from Hofstra. And that's when he said, this is the Hofstra Nostra. <laughs> <laughs> and he, um, he came in my room, my hotel room, mm -hmm. and he said, God, you're funny. And I said, funny? You're hysterical. You didn't know you were funny? No, I knew that I had a great sense of humor, 
and I knew that I found other people funny. Okay. And I knew I made people laugh. Okay. Uh, but I didn't think of myself as a funny person. That okay. was not my thing. You were like a chanteuse. Yeah, the, I was like very serious one. about my singing, you know, and don't dare talk and don't <laughs> laugh. And, but Did I, you take yourself seriously? Very, very seriously. seriously. Okay. <laughs> and um, I, he said, I, I have a script that I want you to do. And I, I, he said, I, I'm going to send a limo down, and you're going to come up to Napa with your daughter. And so I did the next day. We went up to Napa. We had this humongous, enormous, fantastic Italian meal. And as I left, he gave me this script. Is he already loaded? Loaded and working. He's an apocalypse. He just oh, oh, he oh. did everything. Oh, he was okay. like the god after the Godfather. Oh, like, oh so this is it. Oh, okay. This is what he's really... Huge. Up there. Yeah. So I said, oh my God, Francis Coppola wants me to be in his movie. I, I, I thought I died went to heaven. So I did the movie. What and movie? It was called One from the Heart. I know One from the Heart. It was the most insane time of my life. How so? It wasn't a success. That's Let's start with that. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the money to really finish it. Mm -hmm. He owned Zoetrope Studios, mm -hmm. and we were there were five of us who were on his like in his rotating cast. Okay, it was Terry Gar, no. uh, uh, Raul Julia, oh my god, Nastasia Kinski, oh my. me. Uh, Harry Dean Stanton and Frederick Forrest. Oh six my of us. gosh! We were signed to him for several years. Now you weren't all Hofstra people. No, no, no. Okay, but we were his actors. Wow! And of course, it fell apart. It mm -hmm. fell apart. It was very, very sad. It was. It was at a time, which was interesting because I fell apart the year before that. Okay. I had a. I broke my leg, and I was in. I was in a wheelchair. And I, had a blood clot in my lungs, oh, yeah, so yeah. I was really a mess, and I, I declared bankruptcy. It oh, was like, how are you taking care of your daughter through oh, this? Oh please, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, uh, I, well, I, you know, people I, look at you. It's important that people know that this hat is part of your story because people look at you and all they see is success, mm -hmm. and they don't realize that you struggle, that you know, you, you oh, put your pants on one oh. leg at a time like everybody else, yeah. and you have your stuff too. Everybody has their stuff, yeah, right? It was a horrible time. Oy. So how did I say, uh, you know, some nights I didn't have money for groceries. No, seriously, I was living in a mansion in Beverly Hills, and I couldn't pay for my groceries. Okay, yeah. so how'd you get out of that? I declared bankruptcy, mm -hmm. and I went on the road, and I worked all these dives. I had never singing. singing. I had never worked in any places like that. I worked for the mob. That's how I met all these guys, and they became my friends, and they would help me get work. And is this before or after you owned clubs? This was right before. Oh, okay. No, that's how okay. it happened. So okay. I had done a couple of off board. I had done Funny Girl. I had already been in Seesaw, which I was fired from. That was where it began. I mean, I was Michelle Lee, my roommate, my darling friend. Yeah. She was hired and replaced me. Were you already friends? Yeah. We were friends from the time we lived in the same uh, building and we all oh, maybe we were friends forever. We were in a show called Bravo Giovanni together. On Broadway. on Broadway. So now, how did this? But you're still friends today. How? How? Well, you didn't talk for ten years. I was going to say that had to be that not a horrible. not a good thing. No, it was not a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's go back and talk about Funny Girl since we're going past right. it quickly. So, how do you get the audition for Funny Girl and 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 what happens? I was in an industrial show. Okay. Before before Funny Girl, mm -hmm. I was in this industrial show and I would sing with the um, with the band. I would like do some tunes and uh, they'd write some charts for me and mm -hmm. I would sing them at the luncheons mm -hmm. and I would say, you know, El Toreno de Oldsmobile. <laughs> <laughs> you were already starting your ethnic <laughs> career. <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, Carol Haney was the choreographer. I was hired as a dancer-singer. Uh -huh. 
and she and I just got along so great. We were. She loved me, and I Carol loved her. Carol Hayes pajama she, game. That's yes. exactly oh, okay. right. Yes. Uh huh. And she had an understudy story. She was Shirley MacLaine was her understudy. And Shirley MacLaine went on for her and became this enormous star. Steve Heat. Oh my God. She went on for her like. Once. Whoa. Like me. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I didn't know that story or anything like that, but I, I have such an itch. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Don't be silly. Um, so now uh, Carol Haney says, I'm, I'm choreographing this show called Funny Girl with this wonderful, fabulous young woman named Barbara Streisand. I went, oh God, no. I said, I was so jealous and so upset. Okay, so wait, when you when you were in high school together. Yeah, we weren't together. Okay. I hardly knew her. Okay, was she already a thing? No. No. No, she was a couple of years younger than me. Mm -hmm. She um, worked in a Chinese restaurant. Wow. And uh, she wasn't very attractive, and I didn't really know she sang. I uh -huh. didn't know anything much about her. And so, um, uh, so happened? when she, so when Carol says her name, why do you have a reaction? Because I knew her. I mean, I knew her. And okay. I thought, oh, how did she get that I, part? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's my part. Why'd she have that part? Okay, I get that. So, so anyway, we they Carol Haney. I, oh, so she said, "Can you get a job singing at a club in New York somewhere?" So I talked to the everybody I knew in in. Um, in New York at uh -huh. the time, I said, "Isn't there some place I can sing?" So, do you mean to like showcase? Yeah. Uh huh. They said, "Yeah, you could sing at this place called the Living Room, and it was a, a, a club on Second Avenue, mm -hmm. and all the up and coming singers mm -hmm. sang there. Mm -hmm. Abby Lane, mm -hmm. and you know, all the a little, a little older than me, mm -hmm. and um, a little more um, experience. Okay. But I got the job." Okay. And I made a hundred dollars a week, and I shared it with my piano player. <laughs> oh, and good so, old days. yeah. So people came to hear me sing, mm -hmm. and Carol Haney, I invited her in, and she brought Garson Kane in. I love it. I yeah. loved him and with Ruth Gordon. I yeah. waited on the two of them at Maxwell's Club oh, a million years God. ago. You worked for my friend Warner Leroy. Oh yes, I did for many years. Oh my God! And my, my and Drew worked for him. My Drew, who owns Tribeca Grill with De Niro, worked for Warner Leroy, ran uh, Tavern on the Green, and that's my daughter's boss now. Drew and I have been friends for forty five years. Well, Kay Leroy is my best my best friend. I waited on Kay all the time. Oh my oh, God! Oh my God! <laughs> It feels like we know each other forever. There it's you go. That's bizarre. I know. Okay, uh, so, so where were we? Oh, all right, so, so we brought Garson Kane in, Ray Stark. Okay. And Ray Stark was the producer, mm -hmm. funny girl. And Garson, Garson directed. Garson, he was the director. Garson was uh -huh. the director. Uh huh. And they heard me sing, and they offered me a part in Funny Girl, uh, one of the showgirls, because I was still a showgirl. Yeah. So. Um, I was a Ziegfeld showgirl. Mm -hmm. I got this part, and then I'm I'm waiting. Was for that this like thrilling for you? Thrilling. Or? Thrilling. Thrilling. Okay. okay. You're, is this this isn't your Broadway debut though? Is it? Is it your no. Broadway debut? No, no. You'd already been on Broadway. I've been on Broadway in two shows. But okay. They ran for five and a half minutes. Okay. Um, so um, I'm trying to get it all together. Okay. Um, so okay. So 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 they give me this part. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting, I'm going to rehearse starting in January or February, I'm not sure. And um, I, all of a sudden I get a call, um, Mr. Stark would like to meet with you. He's staying at a hotel on Central Park. and he This is like, not a good story, I know this doesn't sound, oh it's a good story, okay. Going to a, a, a producer's hotel room, <laughs> yeah, well, that has to yeah, have stuff. Yeah, it yeah. did have to, but uh -huh. I didn't think about it. Okay. So I'm living at the Whitby. Do you remember the Whitby in New mm -hmm. York on 45th Street? Well, Michelle Lee was my roommate, <laughs> and uh, I, I, uh, they sent a Bentley for me with a driver. Nice. And a bar in the back. <laughs> I never saw anything like that in my life. I said, oh my God, there's a bar in here. Look at this, and sandwiches and things. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so I, I went to uh, Central Park South mm -hmm. or West or North. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I didn't know. And um, I go up to Ray Stark's suite, mm -hmm. and he's in bed 
with his leg in a cast, and he's. I, I have to stop this for film for a minute. Can, you, can we stop? No, we can't stop. Oh, it's well, live. Go, 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 go. I'll talk to Pete. Go, yeah, go oh, take care okay. of your nose. You'll come back and tell the story. Okay. Um, all right, I'm done. All right, you're done. Was, you okay, Pete, can, is, is there more tissue? You have more tissue. I'm going to okay. box Okay, good. I'm so embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Your nose is running. Me, I'm so you just, is Lainey's been sick, and she's doing it anyway because she's a trooper. Yeah, they, That's they, right. They call me the little trooper. The little trooper. <laughs> So, okay. I, Ray Stark, you're going to his hotel. And he's lying there with this broken leg up on a, in chains and something. He's in traction? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he goes to me like this, sit down on the bed. Oh. I said, Mr. Stark, I can't sit down on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? You're like a kid. Yeah. Like yeah. 20. 20. Yeah. And he says, look, I'd like to offer you a Barbara Streisand's understudy. I said, oh, Mr. Stark, I don't want to be an understudy. Wow. I said, I, I just, I know what an understudy does, and I, I, it's not for me, because I want to be creative, I want to develop my own roles. He says, I'll tell you. You had moxie, I that's did, moxie. I did. That is a lot of moxie right there. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. But you also had a lot of self-confidence. You had to have I a lot had, of self-confidence yeah, to do that. I, I had self-confidence and I was also terribly yeah. shy. I get that. And also very uh, insecure mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, my father died during this period. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to restaurants and hardly being able to say, could you pass the water? I, I just I couldn't talk hardly. Mm -hmm. But I could sing and I could dance and I could look good. Mm -hmm. So. So I said, I really don't. He says, listen, we'll give you $50 more a week. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> there, it <is. laughs> there it is. So I went to rehearsal, and I, I never got a script. I never got the music. I just was like shoved off to the side, and I got my $50 a week, but I didn't know what my job was. Little so you're not doing the showgirl part anymore? Yeah, I Oh, am. you are. I you're doing the showgirl part. Vera, the oh, showgirl. Okay. <laughs> And uh, it was difficult. How but, so? Um, well, I don't know. I, I, I just, I wanted to have this. You wanted I more. Wanted, I wanted, yeah, yeah, I wanted to work. I wanted to do something. And I, I, they were ignoring me. Now, all of a sudden, Barbara gets sick. And all of a sudden, now I'm throwing the script. I'm throwing the How music. long into it is this? Uh, you're doing it for a while. You're there a for a little while. while. We okay. were in Boston. Okay. And Barbara did not get great reviews. The show did not get great reviews. Only really? in Boston, no. And they fired Garson Canyon. They wow. fired Carol Haney. Wow. And they hired Jerry Robbins. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he was going to do everything. And he looked at me and he said, he said, she's going to play funny girl. This girl is going to be funny she's beautiful she's ridiculous don't don't give her this part so i w i was devastated so my jerome husband, robbins said yeah, this yeah so i said to uh, a gentleman who was eventually my husband i said peter i don't know what to do he said listen this is what i, I think you should do dolly peter was daniel he was uh, Barbara's. He, he, he was pl played, played the piano. Barbara. Okay. And he also was the associate musical director of the show. Barbara. Okay. He said, I think you should call Jerry Robbins. <coughs> mm -hmm. Unless you want to Excuse me. No, that was a call. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I think what you should do mm -hmm. is um, tell him you want 10 minutes of his time. And would he give you 10 minutes? And you'll sing a song for him, you do a scene. And if he doesn't like you, you'll you'll quit the show, or you'll just stay as the chorus girl, and that'll be it. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, other people were auditioning for my part: Carol uh, Burnett, Edie Gourmet. Oh my God! Yeah, they were all auditioning to be Barbara's understudy. Isn't wow, that weird? Carol Burnett? Burnett? That's crazy. Yeah, it was right before she became a big star, mm -hmm. and so. He gave me 10 minutes. I did I'm the Greatest Star. I did a scene from the show. 
never said a word to me. But I had the script, I had the music, and they rehearsed me with the, with the cast. Mm -hmm. They took pictures of me. All of a sudden, it was like, Attention. in case Barbara gets sick, uh -huh. this is the girl. Okay. Wow. So I, um, I had what I wanted, mm -hmm. and I was very happy. Mm -hmm. But now I'm in the show. A year, a year and a half, I'm getting very crazy. And you're not going I'm on. Crazy. No, I'm, I'm never going on, I know. I'm never going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's Barbara Streisand. <laughs> you're not going on, yeah. Um, all of a sudden, I get a call. Oh, and everywhere I went, I think I told you this. But, uh, but every, tell yeah, them, because uh, I, this is a great everywhere story. Everywhere I went, people would say, if you ever go on, call me. <laughs> So I had a little list, and I would write their name and their number mm -hmm. down. And uh, I got the call, you're going on. So I run to the theater, I'm in her dressing room, I get all dressed, and I'm, I, 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 mean, I put my makeup on, I'm in Barbara Streisand's dressing room. She is now the biggest star in the country. And do you, do you feel like you know the part? Oh, yeah, you're, you're ready, ready. You're ready to go. Yeah, okay. here I go, oh, watch out. <laughs> God. Yeah, but it wasn't ballsy. I was never ballsy. I just, I knew I could do it, yeah. and I was going to do it. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm all dressed. Oh, and I called everybody on my list. And Which then, in those days took effort because you had to have a pay okay, phone right, and, and right. And, yeah, and, and a pen and, and paper. And you, <laughs> yeah, you couldn't just sit here and hit the buttons. So, and they all showed up. And I say, and so did Barbara. She walked in front of me, walked onto the stage, and I... You're in the clothes? Yeah. She had, we had our More than, clothes. yeah, yeah. It was horrifying. I went next door to the coffee shop, and I cried, and oh. cried my eyes out, and I went back upstairs to the fifth floor, to the chorus dressing room, and I did the show as my Vera, and the next day I just went, I mean, I couldn't get up out of bed. I was like devastated. And my girlfriend calls me, she says, you know, you're in every newspaper. It says, show goes on, but lady doesn't. Whoa, whoa. so you had called people from the press was I part of your- Yes. Oh, God. Show goes on, lady doesn't, it ain't funny, girl. Ooh. And, oh my God! Oh it was my! Unbelievable. Oh my yeah. God! So I go to the theater very sheepishly, and the producers out there, Ray Stark, and the company manager, and oh. the stage manager, listen, Kazan, you are going on today, but you cannot tell a soul. I said, okay. Can I call my mother? <laughs> and she had a duplicate list. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I was I was very shrewd at the time, and I was I was kind of desperate in a way to make sure this was yeah, my but that, chance. Yeah, but that you you had that come that yeah. you you earned that. I did. You I earned did. that. So the press came the and, press, and you got yeah, reviewed. I got reviewed in Time Magazine oh. in the no, in the Post for the, for going on one day. One day, two, two twice, sh two shows, and it changed your life. Changed my life. Did you get Did you get a standing ovation? Oh, you had to. Yeah, get, you had to get a standing ovation. Of course, people you did. people actually got up and left. They were going to leave because Barbara because wasn't there. Barbara was there, and you, I saw them, and they turned around and came back. That yeah, was wonderful, and it kind of screwed me up a lot. I mean, how so? Well. Barbara was a different kind of animal than mm -hmm. me. She looked different. She was more of a waif. She was, I probably was more sensitive and probably, I can't, probably my very vulnerable. I was very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I looked like I wasn't. Yeah. So I was treated differently. Mm -hmm. And I did the same things I had seen Barbara do. Mm -hmm. She was aggressive. She was, you know, she pushed her way. I wasn't like that. I couldn't do that. But I did learn certain things that were not good. 
Such as? That if I'm late, they can wait for me. Like diva kind of yeah. behavior? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, stupid. I was stupid. Mm -hmm. And I I screwed up in a lot of ways. I mean, I, I, uh, I burned a lot of bridges. Mm -hmm. And um, But my career was off in sailing. I mean, mm -hmm. it didn't matter because I was gone. Mm -hmm. And I had all these men around me. Wait, wait. You didn't stay with the show, did you? No. No. I gave my notice. As and soon it as was, it was, it was rumored that I was fired, but I wasn't fired. And I did stay with the show oh, like about, well, maybe a month. And mm -hmm. then I started getting all these offers. I was going to go into the Plaza Hotel, and I was going to uh, Hungry Eye in San Francisco, and the Waldorf, and I mean, it was like un. It was so unbelievable. The doors just opened. Oh, yeah, and I, it was made me so hysterical. I wasn't good enough for any of this. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I'm not ready for this. I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? And um, Peter came on the road with I was me. just going to say, so this yeah. this piano playing, yeah. soon to be husband, Yeah. Came on he the left road. the show also. Well, he left before I left. Oh, okay. He moved to, oh, that's a long mm -hmm. story. I can't go into it. Okay. But um, he went down to Puerto Rico mm -hmm. because he had a job there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I begged him to come back. And um, he came back about two months later, and I was, you know, oh, I forgot to tell you, I, I got a movie contract with, um, with Ray Stark, a seven-year movie contract. From, oh, yeah. from that one day on? Uh, right. Wow. No, not from that one oh, day. From because he wanted me to stay with the show. He wanted me to do this. And I was supposed to be in, what was that movie called? Oh, Robert Forster was in it. Um, oh, oh, with Marlon Brando. Oh, uh, it was, um, I can't remember. Okay. But anyway, I was supposed to be in the show, in this movie. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, it just became a real problem for Ray Stark with with Barbara the Star and me, you know, and, and so I let it go. I let I let the contract go because I wanted I wanted to be myself. I wanted to be my own person. Mm -hmm. And everywhere I went, I was constantly compared to Barbara. Wow! It was really became a nightmare. Mm -hmm. I um I would get reviewed. I looked like Barbara. I sounded like Barbara. You don't look anything like well, Barbara. You don't sound like Barbara. Well, we were influenced by the same singers. Okay. And I think that played a lot mm -hmm. into what people were getting from me. You, mm -hmm. know? you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think we were both influenced by Judy Garland and Lena Horne mm -hmm. and later Ella Fitzgerald for me. But mm -hmm. Um, so phrasing and, and uh, yeah, and choice of material mm -hmm. a lot, a mm -hmm. lot of choice of material, mm -hmm. and just that's who influenced me, and okay. I think that's who influenced Barbara mm -hmm. because we sent we seem to pick the same music. By the way, did you can did you two become friends when you were not working? really not no. no okay Barbara didn't become friends. She had a big job yeah, and she couldn't yeah. And I understood it, and mm -hmm. I respected it, mm -hmm. and I, I, well, kudos to her, mm -hmm. kudos. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how she did it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how she got this strength to do what she did. Mm -hmm. And and the, um, she, I mean, she was so brilliant, mm -hmm. and she was so. I mean, that voice. Oh, she used to kill me every mm -hmm. night. It was just a, she deserved everything she got. Yeah. So I was very honored to be her understudy. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just, you know, I wasn't playing games here. Uh -huh. So I just knew that was what I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But I didn't ever want to take it away from her. Mm -hmm. Never. I just wanted my chance. And you got your, you got your I chance. I got my chance. Mm -hmm. And then I started working across the country. I worked everywhere in every country. You know that movie, If It's Tuesday, It Must Be Belgium? Yeah. That's how I felt. Uh -huh. I didn't know where I was. Uh -huh. I didn't know what town I was in. I so you do, you're do doing cabaret, you're, you're singing. Yeah. And, so, and you're not acting now. No. You're not. And I finally got a movie 
uh, someone offered me a movie with Rory Calhoun and, um, oh God, what was his name? Funny, funny guy. I'll think of it. Okay. Um, and he, uh, oh, what, what happened? Uh, oh, so I, I said, listen to my managers. I had managers and handlers, you mm-hmm. know, I was like, I said, look, I want to find out what it's like to be in front of a camera. Nobody will ever see this picture. All of a sudden, I'm traveling to Africa and Asia and Australia and it's big sign, Lady Kazan sings Sonny in Dayton's Devils. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> it was sold to National General Pictures, uh-huh. this movie that I made for Four Cents, and I was... I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where to look. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know anything. Uh But I would like just watch everybody and I would think to myself, okay, that's what I'll do, you know. Okay, I'll try that. But I just was terrible and I affected uh, the speech. You know, I spoke with an English, you know, my husband was English. Uh And all of a sudden, I had an English accent. (laughs) And people would say to me, are you from England? I said, no, I'm a phony. (laughs) So... Yeah, that was unbelievable. And then I got a job. That's when I broke my leg after that. And I was on the way. I mean, I was working at the Sahara Hotel. My picture was the whole side of the oh building. Oh, my God. Oh the my entire God. side of the building. Oh, my God. So um, then this, the direct, the, there was a, oh, there was a photographer on the film who said to me, you know, you could take the Jewish woman out of Brooklyn <laughs> and out of the kitchen, like Sophia Loren did with pizza and, you know, she's Italian, and, and we'll make you the Jewish Sophia Loren. Wow. And I'll take your photographs. I said, let me think about it. He says, I'll sell as a playboy. Let me just say... I know nothing uh, about this part of the story. I know nothing well, about this. Uh, just let me say, I was a hippie in my heart. Mm-hmm. I got married in the plaza, but I had a spiritual ceremony. <laughs> You're talking to a hippie, so yeah, I, I, yeah, I relate yeah, to yeah. this. Yeah. So I thought nothing of taking my clothes off. Mm-hmm. We all talked. We all took our hair. Clothes off. It was, it was yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. When in the sauna, we never looked at each other in a sexual mm-hmm. way. We just were free. Yes, <laughs> we love. So um, he said, I'd like to take some pictures of you. I had no idea that there'd be men in their closets with my picture. You know, I didn't understand that, you know. I you were going to be objectified. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, I, I was right on the cusp of women's lib. Mm-hmm. My head was there. But I was also a child of like the 50s and 60s. You mm-hmm. know, I was... So you're also doing the provocative... Yeah, yeah the stuff with know, Dean Martin and, I, and all yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I... It was very strange time. What was I saying? So you, so you were talking. So he took your picture. Oh yeah. How, yeah. How, so how did this impact your? Oh, yeah, oh, it was horrible because um, first and foremost, I didn't understand what Playboy was, mm-hmm. and uh, all these pictures, and then <laughs> the only picture that was reminiscent of anything Jewish <laughs> was that I was in this elevator with all these guys that were wearing yarmulkes. <laughs> Naked. No, oh, I wasn't naked, you are, you are but naked. I was in a flimsy, uh-huh. and then I took some other <laughs> pictures, and um, they came out in Playboy, and I was splashed everywhere, Ooh. Oh, yeah, I was splashed everywhere, and it really affected me mm-hmm. in a very negative way, mm-hmm. I just didn't know who I was, I didn't know what I was, I didn't know my name, I swear to God. Were I people was were myself. were were people giving you a hard time about it? Yeah, I there was a mother's march in Vegas. <laughs> mother's <laughs> against Lady Gazette. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh my it's god. True. Oh my it's god. True. Oh my god. There was a mother's march. Oh yeah, yeah. 
You know why? Cause How I did your daughter was, fare, fare through this? My daughter wasn't born. Okay, yeah, this was your yeah, oh, okay. Okay. Was okay. A year before my daughter. Okay. So how did you get out of that? How did you bounce back from that? Francis Coppola put me in one from the heart. And that started. Gave you legitimacy. Yeah. And wow. the next film I did, I played that Jewish woman in my favorite year. And That's it. You're that done. Was, You're off was, and running. Yeah, I was you got your... and I was. It, that was. That was it. But I, 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 while I was playing those saloons across the country, I mean, I had unbelievable experiences. Unbelievable. But I can't go into it now. But unbelievable. So wait. So go back to when you lost everything in your bank. Yeah. When? Yeah. When is that? How does that fall into this story? I went. Well, I, I. I, I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. I I had broken my leg and had the blood clots, and I went back to L.A., mm -hmm. bought a house, got married, and I'm living with Peter, mm -hmm. and we are, you know, trying to make a life. And I wasn't really interested in working. I like I was I had brain damage, <laughs> so I'm, I said, you know, I read in the paper they're doing this show called Seesaw. And I am so right for this part. I mean, I was born to play this part. So I called Cy Coleman, who used to date me. I used to date him. Oh, wow. Well. I knew his niece, his great yeah, niece. Yeah. yeah. I used to date him when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I said, Cy, I have, to, I have to audition for this show. He said, come on, come to, come to New York. We'll pay you fare. We'll put you up. I went. I got the job. And I had just started studying with Lee Strasberg. And I was a method actress. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have crazy people in your class? Did you? Not really. Not really? No, no, no. Okay. Because everybody hard. studied with Lee Strasberg, yeah, right? But I was steeped in the method. And I didn't understand how to use it yet. I didn't mm. know. I didn't know what was appropriate to rehearse with, you know, I, I didn't understand that some of these things you had to do in private. Mm -hmm. Because they were excessive and they were, you know, indulgent. So, you know, I, I then you would finish the work and then you put it into the character, right. you know, so I didn't really understand that. Mm -hmm. And I became a, a, a problem for them, you mm -hmm. know, in Seesaw, it, well, they didn't understand what I was doing. And I was really wonderful on the play, if I must say so. <laughs> I'm sure you were. <laughs> but they didn't get me. Mm -hmm. So um, oh, I got fired, and I, I, I just, that's when I went on the road. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in Chicago, I was in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and I remember there was a fabulous place called um, Great, uh, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, it's right near here. Maybe I can go up and lie down for a while. And, you know, I'll get a room and with a nice bed. Because I was, I was with my daughter mm -hmm. and the musicians. Mm -hmm. And anyway, to make a long story short, I went up to Lake Geneva. It was empty. There was no, no, nobody there. Hmm. And I just, I said to the manager, what, what's wrong here, you know? Mm -hmm. They were playing, they had rock and roll in the beautiful theater that I used to sing in. Mm -hmm. and there was a group there called the Shaggy Gorillas minus one buffalo fish. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, I, t I said to them, this is what you should do. Uh -huh. I said, you should have jazz because jazz and Playboy are synonymous. So I went down to Chicago and I, he said to me, so tell me, I have some great ideas. I had one idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I said... You had uh, two really good know, ideas. <laughs> no, I had one idea. I said, I think Playboy and you should, this is what you should do. He said, that is amazing. We have a club in L.A. that is really falling on its ass. And you should take it over. And we'll put you up. And we'll pay for your sit for six months. We'll, we'll we'll take care of you, and you put it together. And I I mean I th 
I, it was unbelievable. Did it you was, know what you were doing? Yeah. You did? I did. Okay. I had worked so many clubs. Uh -huh. I knew what was wrong with the places mm -hmm. I worked. I knew what was right with the places uh -huh. I worked. I knew what it should look like. Mm -hmm. I knew what it should feel like. Mm -hmm. And I would sing in it and I booked the artist. It was the best job I ever had. In really? My life, in my life. Because booking, I'm ready to jump out a window. Best. But when people cancel on you and. Oh, like, yeah, but I know. Yeah. But it was fun, and yeah. I was young. Yeah. And I mean, I had so much fun. I had the craziest people working for me. The artist would be insane. <laughs> I mean, anybody ever said I was difficult? <laughs> There was nobody more difficult than these people. I had people walking off the stage, not coming back, going down the escalator. I would be screaming, you know, like Anita O'Day, Anita, please come back. <laughs> well, I had uh, unbelievable stories I can't even tell you because we're on. Yes. But that was, that was the best job. And then my career started again. Okay, so how did it start again? I started working like the Fairmonts, mm -hmm. and I started working, and then Francis, and then I give you, I backtrack, and here I am. <laughs> and here, okay, so, so you, so how, so, God, I was, I was watching a clip of you and Renee Taylor today. Oh, um, we are from, funny, fabulous. From that, it, it's my favorite episode of the nanny where you don't get asked to sing at the wedding, but, right. then, you, but then you sing, and then. She, you guys are apologizing right. to each other, but using different language, and they have subtitles. Right. What you're really saying? <laughs> Hysterical. Oh, she's the greatest. She's crazy wonderful. Mm -hmm. And you got and when you did my favorite year, though, you and Joseph Bologna didn't have scenes. To, did you have scenes together? I don't think you had scenes with Joseph Bologna because you were always in the house, and he was in. No, the, I never had a scene yeah. with him, but we we knew each other. I knew Renee Taylor since I was a kid on the Merv Griffin, because we were on the Merv Griffin show together. She, when she got married on the Merv Griffin show, she got married, she and Joe got married. They did? Her. Yeah. Wow. But I knew her, do I have a tissue on my No, head? you don't. <laughs> so do you know, do you know Steve Rollins from back then, from no, Merv I Griffin? No, I never knew him. Oh, well, that's funny. Because mm -hmm. you did a lot of Merv Griffins, didn't a you? A lot. Yeah. Yeah, and Mike you, that and Mike Douglas. And you did a lot of Dean Martin. Oh yeah. 26. Wow. So what was Dean like? Oh, I loved him. <sighs> he was warm and funny and bright and and he adored me, you know, and it was um, yeah, it was special. It was we had a an attraction for each other, but it we showed. never but we never acted on it. We mm -hmm. just cuz I had just gotten married and he was married. Just, but we just enjoyed each other. It showed. Yeah. And what about Frank? Good old Frank. You, uh, God, how, tell us about Sinatra. What, what, <laughs> tell me about Sinatra. Well, oh, that was one of the movies I did. Which oh, movie? Yeah, I've got to blow my nose. Blow your nose. Like Let, Pete, there. talk. Let's talk while Laney's blowing questions? her nose. <laughs> yeah, you, are okay. there questions? Uh, we have to get see. back to Frank Sinatra, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nikki would like to know, uh, are you and Nia uh, going to work together again? Who's Nia, Nikki? Nia, are you and Nia? Nikki's oh, just asking the question. Oh, yeah, I think so. I, we're supposed to do Big Fat Greek Wedding three. Oh, oh wow! That's great. But I don't know if it's going to happen. Okay. You know, I'm just. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. Are you going to write a book? Yeah, I'd like to, but I need to find. Um, okay, we're going to talk. You know, I remember you said that at Women Who Write that you're looking for somebody and. I'm, I'm going to see if I have my book. I'm going to leave you my book. I've never thought about writing anybody else's story with them, but I just, I'm, I, you'll read my book. You'll see. Maybe we'll write your book together or something. All right. All right. All right. I like that. Yeah. I just, I love your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you call that, your vibe, the whole thing. It's, it's excellent. So, so, um, so Frank, tell us about Frank. <laughs> Um, I was at the Eden Rock Hotel working, opening for Don Rickles, and he was at the Fontainebleau mm -hmm. next door, mm -hmm. and I, <laughs> I got a message, a little message uh, on a note, Frank Sinatra would like to meet you. So of course I was going to meet him. Hell yeah. So um, he said he wanted to see me for a movie. 
So he was doing the, the Tony Rome series, mm -hmm. you know, all those movies. Mm -hmm. And there was a part of a go-go dancer. And um, I went up to his suite the next day. And um, I took my manager with me. Mm -hmm. I was not going to go by myself. Mm -hmm. And um, and we met and we talked and I found him to be absolutely delicious. I mean, fascinating and warm. Wait, was sexy. he was he warm? And oh yeah, to me he was. Uh, I don't know about anybody else. Mm -hmm. I don't really care. Yeah, hell. <laughs> so we. Um, he was at the height of his career, the, right? The height. Yeah. And um, he said, "Listen, come see my show tomorrow." I said, "I can't because I'm singing at the same time as you." He said, I'll tell you what, I'll wait for you. <laughs> so I said, wow. I know, I know. So, Jilly Rizzo mm -hmm. and two Stalker guys <laughs> <laughs> came to pick me up at the dressing room and took me through the bowels of the two hotels and I went back in backstage and I came up and the lights were on, and as I walked down the aisle, the lights went down. Oh, stop! I'm I'm How? Uh, what is that? What did that it? feel like? And that, like what I felt that? like the queen. The queen. Oh my <laughs> god! Like yeah, and I sat down, and he introduced. I had. I've been in the business two minutes, and he introduced me. Oh, oh my god! It was wild. He introduced me. He said the nicest things. And, it was great, and then um, then I did the picture, and then we wait, dated. Wait, what movie was it? Um, you dated yeah. Frank Sinatra? I did. Oh my God, I can't! Oh my yeah. God, what yeah. was that like? I mean, you know, I, I'm not, not the kiss and tell part. I mean, I just can't even. Like, was he like? He was. He I he scared me. Yeah. I just was so intimidated. Intimidated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't even talk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, I just like, it was Frank Sinatra. Oh my God. And just, yeah, he asked me out. Uh, he asked me to come to the, what was the name of it? Neva Lodge, the Neva Lodge. It was someplace up in, um, in, in, in um, Nevada. Mm -hmm. And he owned this, this hotel. Mm -hmm. But I didn't go. And, um, I just went out with him a couple of times, but he always had a gang around him. Mm -hmm. I was never, I never got to know him, mm -hmm. not really. Wow, that's quite, that's yeah. quite a tale. So, so now, so, so you make that movie. So, or, so then you did a, you've done a lot of TV. I mean, you were yeah. from Ben Casey. I saw right. that. Like, that was oh, my I, first job. I love Ben Casey. That was my first TV show. How'd you get that? I think my agent. Okay. Uh, but I, uh, yeah, that was, yeah, and that I did, and then I did, what was that other show I did that was so exciting? Oh, I can't remember. At uh, what point do, do you stop auditioning? Like, oh, then. Yeah, like. Yeah, I didn't audition, not much. Like, my favorite year, you're off and running. Yeah. Yeah, you're off and running. So how did... But um, I didn't know it. Really? Yeah. I, 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 I didn't know that. I wish I knew, knew that. I would have enjoyed myself more. That's advice that... That's yeah. good advice to give people. Enjoy it. Right? Enjoy the journey, it's, right? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that well, I was going to have such a good time. I was always... Either I wasn't going to get a job, or I was going to get the job, or I was too late, or I was too early. Did you or... ever not get something you really wanted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two things broke my heart. Go ahead. I wanted to play Mama Rose. Okay, you know, when we very first started this, the first thing I was going to say to you is, you have to play that role before you're done. That's a role you have to play. I think I'm too old now. I don't think you are. No? I don't think you are. I, I, in my prime, I, I played it. I did the show. I did it in. Um, I met the these producers that were going to produce it on Broadway, mm -hmm. and it was um, it was the most. I was this was just fate that was not going to happen. 
because I got a television show that week and I became a regular on this show called Teddy Z. And uh, what's his name? Oh God, wonderful, wonderful director. Uh, brilliant director. Mm -hmm. He called me up and he said, listen, we hired this woman, I don't want to say her okay. name. And she can't sing. And we really want you to come to Florida and take over this part. I said, you know what? I just signed this contract, 13 episodes, and I don't know what to tell you. I just, I'm, 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 I'm this is in my dream role. And they wouldn't let me out of my contract. Oh. Yeah. But I did it in Westbury. Mm -hmm. I did it in uh, Pennsylvania, and I did it in Texas. And it was kind of the best thing I've ever done, and it was the I mean, most That is so your, I can so yeah. see you so in that. So satisfying. Mm -hmm. That role and the rose tattoo. Mm -hmm. Two parts. My, I, I, I spoke to this, Josie Aberdeen was her name, she was the producer. Mm -hmm. And I took her to lunch and I said, I want to do the rose tattoo. Mm -hmm. She said, we just hired somebody. Oh. I said, you just hired somebody. My agent is in London trying to get the rights. She said, who's your agent? I told her the name of the agent. She said, that's who we made the deal with. And Mercedes Rule is playing the part. I, I went to the phone, I called him up and fired him. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Things happen like that, mm -hmm. you know? You just have to, you either get stronger, or what, what doesn't kill you makes you strong. Mm -hmm. So you know, but a lot of people you've had a lot of people with you all the way. I mean, Michelle oh, Lee, yeah. and France, and you still friends with Francis? Yes, I assume? yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I don't see him very often because mm -hmm. he's living all over the world. Mm -hmm. But I do, and his wife is a wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. I love him. I really love him. He is um, a very special person in my life. And Renee Taylor. I mean, a lot of people yeah, have I mean, been in, in my life forever. a long time. Yes, yes. So, and okay. I have people who've worked for me for like 50 years. Oh. I have. My drum has been with me 40 years. Oh, wow. Okay, speaking of which, we have to do this for Steve <laughs> Rollins or he'll kill me. Right. Okay, so you're going to be in Palm Springs. At the Purple Room. On, ja on January 3rd. 3rd, I want to say. Okay. And then I'm going to be at Vibrato in Los Angeles up in the Glen. Beverly Glen yes. on the 16th of January. January and there's something else but I can't remember. Okay, those are the two he gave me. So I don't know. After, we did it, Steve. We did it. And Steve, mwah. I love Steve Rollins. I he's love fabulous. And he, he's the reason that we're sitting here because he yeah. reconnected. After I tried to get you a few years ago and you hurt yourself because you were doing celebrity autobiography with, um, with Stephen Weber and Lorraine Newman and who I don't remember who I else was there that day. That was that was fun. So I had so much fun. So wonderful. Gene Pack. And you're gonna do something I'm for him do again. Something for him again. Okay, so I'll be there. People gonna go see Laney yep. on stage. Okay. I, oh, I would love that so much. So okay, so what else? So is there? What, what are we missing? For, is, so is there anything else? My daughter. You talk about how did you single? How did you do this? I. That was hard. Mm -hmm. It was hard. I had a lot of help. It takes a village. Okay, yeah, it does. And so I have a woman who's with me tonight mm -hmm. who's worked for me for my daughter's. How old is my daughter? 48. Oh my God. Yeah, my daughter's 48. She's mm -hmm. been with me since my daughter was six. Oh, she God. took care of my daughter. She was the nanny. Mm -hmm. And then she worked for me. Mm -hmm. And now she's. She's a good girl. She's a good woman, and she's been with me all these. Days. So I just, you know, give her a little job once in a while. Yeah. And come with me, and um, and she's Jean Marie is her name. Mm -hmm. and, um, and tell us about your daughter. My that's what I was going to tell you. My daughter is a magnificent singer. Wow. But she doesn't want to do it. You know, she's been with me during all the hard times. Mm -hmm. To me, it was somewhere over the rainbow. It was, oh my God, it's, I'm going to have a career in this fantastic 
magical business mm -hmm. to my daughter. It was like, oh God, are we going to get paid this week? Oh. Did you see Judy? Did you see the movie? Yeah, yeah. Did I like it? No. Okay. <laughs> well, you knew Judy, yeah. you know? So. Yeah, but I... But the life that they described yeah, that she had? I, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I was close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, mine wasn't quite as tragic, mm -hmm. but I could have seen myself going off the end, going off the edge. But I'm so grateful for my childhood. Um, you know, I had a great parents, and I have a beautiful sister who happens to be a psychologist. Uh huh. So that's good. And your and your my mom got to see you be successful. Oh did, yes. did your dad get to no, see? No, no. Mm -hmm. But he knew I was good. He knew he loved mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But my daughter and my granddaughter. She's a wonderful singer. She's having a little career. She she sang at the Whiskey and Go Go. Nice. And she writes her own music and she sings. She it passed a generation. Um, my daughter has the the soul, mm. but my granddaughter has the courage to go on. And, wow. And do it. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to have her perform at Women Who Write. Maybe she'll come Maybe and sing she'll for come. us. Yeah. I would love that. She, and she, and she she writes all her own material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do that. And she recorded. She's on YouTube, and her name is Bella Blue. Isabella Blue. Isabella Blue. That's her name. Okay. And there's a grandson. There's a grandson and a grandmother or granddaughter. Hmm. They're four years old. Do they have stars in their eyes? I don't know yet. Yeah, too young. I don't know yet, but he is so beautiful. Oh my God. <laughs> and so, uh, so it's 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 hard now, you know, mm -hmm. for me because. It gets to a point where you don't have the energy, you mm -hmm. know, to to take care of the way you want mm -hmm. to. Uh, for me, anyway, mm -hmm. I would love to take them here and take them there, and I just don't have the the strength or the energy. But they're gorgeous. And uh, tell us the story of how you got my big fat Creek wedding because that's a big part of your career. Because there was one, there was two, there was the TV show. Maybe there's three. So how'd you, <laughs> how'd you get how'd you get my big fat Creek wedding? Uh, how long is this interview? We're gonna, this is it. We're, we're going to do this, and then if there's any questions, Pete will uh, tell us, and then we're done. Um, I got a call from my agent, mm -hmm. and he said, "Listen, Tom Hanks called. He'd like to uh, have you come to his office." and read some kind of a play or something. It's a Greek thing. I said, Tom Hanks? He said, yeah, and they're gonna serve a brunch. I said, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I went to his office and the whole cast was around the table for a table read. Mm -hmm. I met all these, Andrea Martin, who was just mm -hmm. so great. Brilliant. Oh my God, mm -hmm. she's a genius. Come on, comic genius. Mm -hmm. And Nia, who was so delightful, and all these people. In fact, Louis Mandela just called me to do a movie with him. And I just got a call from him over the weekend. Sweet. Yeah, he was my son. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went up there, I read this very funny play. It was, and then I never heard from him again. Oh, they, I walked out and I said, thank you, Tom, this is, so great, I can't thank you enough. He said, what are you trying to thank me? He says, it's like having Mickey Mantle. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was thrilled. And I, about a year later, they called me up wow. and said, we're, we're, we're casting this movie, we have no money. And the same story, you mm -hmm. know. But we're doing it a little independent film and we're gonna do it up in Canada. And so I went up there with no expectations to play this Greek woman. I, I worked very hard on, yeah. on her. and I, I went and kind of, well, I went to the great Greek and I asked the maitre d', I said, do you know anybody who has a Greek accent and that I could spend some time with and a family and cook with them and, you know, go out with mm -hmm. them and see? So we introduced me to this wonderful woman and we went to the, they lived in the valley. Mm -hmm. And so I did. I worked with her, and she. I had her read me the lines with an accent, and and the wow. next thing I know, there we are. Did you have any idea of what was going? Never, was, never in my wildest dreams. Wow. But we loved each other. The mm. cast came together with us in such a harmonic way, mm. and it was so loving. Mm. 
Mm. Michael Constantine oh, and you, uh, you too. Oh my like, God, I love mm. him. Mm. Yeah. I adore him, and I love the kids. I mm. love my son mm. and my Andrea Martin. And oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. great together. Oh my God, I was so lucky. I was. I'm so lucky. I'm. He don't eat no meat. That's my, <laughs> yeah, my kids no. say that all the time. He don't I'll eat make, no meat. I'll make <laughs> lamb. <laughs> God, crazy. He's great. Yeah, that was just such an iconic thing. Yeah. Hey, right, um, Pete, do we have questions? We certainly do. All right. All do, right do, give see. Lainey a couple and then we'll let her okay. go. Uh, who are some of your favorite people that you've worked with? Oh, God. Francis. Mm -hmm. um, all the people I work with. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean I've, I've opened for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I opened for all these great co comics. Was it fun to open for Ripples? Uh, oh my God, <laughs> the funniest man alive. Mm -hmm. I opened for everybody. I mm -hmm. opened for Bill Cosby. Wow, oh, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I opened, I yeah, just every knee mm -hmm. of our dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, I. I just loved everybody. Who was easier to work with? They have Milder or Streisand? Who? Bette Midler. Yes. And Mid oh, from Beaches. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bette Midler. Yeah. Bette Midler. I was older and wiser. Yeah. You know, I was another whole, you know, I, I, I wasn't intimidated or threatened. Mm. Or, you know, I just had a great time with her. Oh, she that's so great. good. Yeah, mm. she's, a, she's a doll. Mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, when you were on a new kid on the block, sixty-eight, doing Dayton's Devil, <laughs> did Western actor Rory Calhoun uh, take you under his wing, and that's when you became friends? No, we never became friends. I hardly knew him. Okay. <laughs> but oh my God, I had his name. Oh, Leslie Nielsen. Thank you. <laughs> I love Leslie Nielsen. Oh my God, what a fun guy. What a funny guy. Yeah, fun. Wow. Funny guy. Funny wow. guy. Yeah. We had fun together. Mm. I had most of my scenes with him. Do, how much do you improvise on set? It's according to the director. Because mm -hmm. on my favorite year, you came up with my favorite line, would you like a little lip, right? right? That was yours, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ma, did you hear that? Lady came up with that. We say it all the time. Really? Always. It's, it's yeah. I, I improvised a lot in Beaches mm. because it was um, the writer's strike. Oh. So Gary Marshall said to me, just... Say whatever you want. <laughs> Gary. So, oh Look, Gary's God. in my living room. I love Gary. What a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. aye, aye, aye. Yeah. Um, so Beach, that, I would not have thought that. How about in my Big Fat Creek wedding? Oh, a lot. Yeah? yeah a lot. Yeah. yeah. But the lines were so great. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to change them? Mm -hmm. you know? She wrote, you know, just such me great mm -hmm. stuff. I never understood... That speech that everybody loved so much. I never quite understood about how I grew up in Greece and it was so difficult. And I never understood that speech. So I understood the thought behind it. Mm -hmm. But that speech gave me a lot of trouble. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I didn't understand the way it was written. You know what I mean? Did you but, talk to her about it? Yeah, but it she, never do it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you did it great, because I would never know that you didn't know what you were doing. So there you go. All right, one more. Trisha would like to know, what's your favorite funny memory acting all time? Mm. Whoa. That's a big question. Yeah, I don't funny. think that probably has one answer. No. Um, <laughs> um, I think in my favorite year, mm -hmm. I had, you know, I had spent a year and a half doing my uh, Francis Coppola's movie, which was like the most dramatic. I felt like I was in on the water. <laughs> Every week we'd say, do we get paid this week? You know, it was like, are we going to survive? And so when I got to do my favorite year, which was the next movie I oh. did, it was such a snap. It was so easy. And, and a party. Was, like and that, like, that dinner scene is oh. maybe the funniest scene that's you know ever that been filmed. My found. husband, the, the, the bantamweight fighter. Rookie. Rookie Karoka. <laughs> Karoka. <laughs> he, he was an extra. He was a doctor. What? Yeah, he's a doctor. He was an extra. And so what happened? They gave him the part. So he was Rookie Karoka. And I said to him, he was Rookie Das. <laughs> <laughs> So funny, oh so God. funny. Pick it up. 
I, I'm telling you, we could I could sit here and do like every line in that in that yeah. movie with you. Oh my God. daughter knows that whole script. Yeah, I mean it's every line is gold. It's it's gold, gold, gold. Yeah. And it's and it's Mel Brooks's story, really, right? Oh, right. He He's Benji the, Stone, uh, right? <laughs> wow. I actually, I think I met. I can't now. It was it's so vague. But yeah. I either met the woman that I played. Oh wow. Or I met somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the actual person. Yeah, I met huh? the actual person. I don't remember who it was. I think it, it, I think it was me. I met me. <laughs> you met you. I love that. I love you. You're you know, great. You know, Lainey, thank you oh. so much. I love this woman. So thank you so, so, so much. I think much. I revealed a little too much. No, no. it was fabulous. No. Pete, thank you so much for being I back. You thank, you thank, thank, thank everybody out there for watching. We'll see you next week on Game Changers. And coming up on, um, I just did this today but December 17th Women Who Write Tuesday George Chakaris oh I love him oh my god I, sexy I, blah, he still looks fantastic I know he I, does I just I, saw him last week he has a gorgeous jewelry line too he has fabulous really? jewelry yes silver gorgeous I had a jewelry line for a minute you did yeah. oh, right, it's gorgeous and so George Chakaris is going to be with us Snuffy Walden who's Ooh. one Snuffy who did the music for the West Wing he's a composer he's been oh. nominated for 15 Emmy Awards. He Whoa, won one. Snuffy? Snuffy Walden won <laughs> 52 BMI name. Awards <laughs> with Sarah Nimitz, who's got millions of views on YouTube. She's probably like your your um, YouTube, your granddaughter. Right. Yes. And um, Lauren Gold, who is the keyboard player for The Who. Wow. The Who. And, um, and Adam Chester, who is the stand-in for Elton John and He's the one who does Elton at every rehearsal and everything. He's oh. brilliant, hysterical, talented in his own right. December 17th. We'll see you next week on Game Changers. Thank you, thank you, thank oh, you. Okay. Connie, get well because we want you to sit here with us <laughs> next time. Take care. Thanks. <laughs>